If you've connected a laptop computer or a desktop computer or any other device to an Ethernet network, then you've probably used a straight through cable. We will sometimes call these patch cables, and they are the most common cable type that you will use in an Ethernet network. These are usually used to connect devices like laptops and like desktop computers directly to a jack or directly to an Ethernet device. And when we start to look into the cable itself and we look at both sides of the cable, you'll notice that the the wiring in the cable has particular coloring. And if you compare the two sides, you'll notice on a straight through cable that the wires go straight through. That is, the wire on one side connecting to pin 1 connects on the other side to pin 1. Pin 2 connects to pin 2, pin 3 to pin 3, and so on, all the way through all eight conductors inside of that cable. And that's why it's a straight through cable. There's no changes inside of this. We don't go from one pin to another. Everything goes directly through the cable from one side to the other. We're usually using these straight through cables when we connect up devices. And although it doesn't seem obvious when you're looking at the ports on an Ethernet device, there are two different kinds of ports in an Ethernet network. One is called an MDI, which is a media dependent interface. And this is most often a network interface card. So this would be on your laptop, on your desktop computer. There's another type of connection device, which is a media dependent interface crossover or an, an MDIX, an MDIX. And this is usually a network infrastructure device like a network switch. If you look at the differences between an MDI and an MDIX, you'll notice that there are differences on the transmit and the receive side. On an MDI device, the transmits are pins 1 and 2. On the MDIX, receive is pin 1 and 2. Now, obviously, this is how the normal communication happens. One device is transmitting, another device is receiving. And if you have MDI and MDIX both connected to each other, you can simply use a straight through cable. And in an Ethernet network, we're connecting pins 1, 2, 3, and 6 all the way through that straight through cable. Now, the other pins might be actually connected on the cable. Pins 4, 5, and 7, and 8 may still be wired inside of that cable. But Ethernet is only going to use two pairs of those, which is pins 1, 2, 3, and 6. And because we have simply swapped the receive and the transmit from the MDI to the MDIX, then you can see you can just use a straight through cable to go directly to it. And that's why when we connect our workstations directly to a network switch, we don't need any special kind of cabling. We just need that patch cable that has that straight through cabling inside of it. If you wanted to connect a workstation to a workstation, that would be an MDI to MDI. One of your challenges there is that your transmits are on pins 1 and 2 on both sides. You can't use a straight through cable because you'll be connecting transmit to transmit and receive to receive. And obviously, nothing is going to get through in that connection. You also use a crossover cable if you're connecting one of the MDIX to MDIX devices, perhaps a switch connecting a switch. So we're bringing up a connection between two switches, for instance. You would use a crossover cable to be able to do that. A crossover cable looks like this. The colors here are for the TIA EIA 568A type of standard. And you can see pin 1, instead of going to pin 1 as it did in the straight through cable, is going from pin 1 and then crossing over to pin 3. Pin 2 crosses over to pin 6. 3 goes to 1, and 6 goes to 2. That's really the only difference. And you can see the pins that are normally unused, lines 4 and 5 and 7 and 8, obviously are still going straight through. Ethernet doesn't use those anyway. Modern network devices don't necessarily require a crossover cable. They're smart enough to understand that if you're plugging in two different devices, say two laptops to each other, the interface card inside of the laptop automatically determines that these are two MDI devices, and it performs the crossover itself within the network interface card. But if you're using some older interface cards or the cards that you're using are not using that auto MDIX functionality quite right, you can always get a crossover cable and force that connection between the two devices. If we were to look at these two devices, say in this case two network interface cards that might be in a laptop or a desktop computer, you can see that the transmits are at 1 and 2 on both sides, and receive is 3 and 6. That's exactly where you would use a crossover cable. And with the crossover, transmit is going to receive, and receive is going to transmit. And now those two devices can talk to each other through the use of this crossover cable.
Ethernet is not the only type of networking to use crossover cables. If you're connecting from, for instance, a T1 network on the wide area network link, and you're connecting to your CSU DSU, your channel service unit, data service unit, these are the devices that are able to take the signal from the wide area network and pass it off to your router in the form of a serial connection usually. Those usually use just a standard straight through cable directly from the jack that's coming from your network provider. Usually it's something called a smart jack and plugging in directly to the CSU DSU. But if you have two CSU DSUs in a lab, they're back to back, you don't have this going through a provider network, then you're going to have to do a similar thing to what you do on the Ethernet side. You need to connect your transmits to receive and your receives to transmit. So you can't use a straight through cable. You would use a crossover cable. But notice in a T1 network, the T1 line uses different pairs to be able to communicate. So in a crossover for T1, the transmits are still one and two, very similar to an Ethernet network. But notice receive is four and five. So you're going to have to change this so that pin four goes to one, pin five goes to two, and then you're swapping one and four and two and five on the other side. And as long as you have that crossover there for your T1 line, you can be in a lab, you can connect back to back a pair of CSU DSUs and communicate through that link as if there was a T1 connection right in the middle.